uh, comics are stupid. No Harry Potter movie is good. You need the Snyder God. Oh, sorry. Just walk in front of you here. I'm gonna put my pop with him. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna put this here. <laughs> Universal needs to sue Sony. Hey, I'm an idiot. I was fired from Fox. <laughs> I'd like actually to see Venom just crush Spider-Man. Hello, everyone. So I'm back today, and oh my, my goodness, I just finished Star Wars: The The Mandalorian. That's the one. And whatever the episode we're on now is for whatever the Jedi. So spoilers, because I want to talk about this because I just finished it, and you know, I've been whole. I just ha I've recorded reviews. I can put out this one's coming out for sure because I am just blown away right now. I'm just in a state of utter shock. So essentially, we just got out of um, the greatest episode of any Star Wars thing ever. Okay, so let's start off with. I'm going to try to compile my thoughts into an orderly fashion for the sake of everyone because right now my brain is spinning still from what was the greatest episode ever. So Ahsoka is in this episode. And so Ahsoka is, let's talk about Ahsoka first as, you know, how they portrayed her because there were worries and I know I was worried and I've talked to people who were also worried where they essentially, where people were kind of like, will they do her justice? Because, you know, it's really hard someone who's so CGI heavy when it comes to animation to be able to accurately pull them off in uh, live action, especially when it's a TV show, right? You know, people worry about this, like, you know, cheap parody kind of version of her. And, um, you know, then I heard some things about her looking a lot like Shaq T. And I was like, okay, you know what? There you go. That works. Uh, and it turns out that I was, that I had heard things partially correct. See, she did look amazing. And now there were, there's a caveat to that because I feel like when she had her cloak on and when she was doing all the action stuff in the dark, you don't really notice any of the flaws. But then when the, you know, when there were scenes where she was talking and stuff, you know, when like when she was talking in the forest to the Mandalorian, that was a scene, for example, where it looked, it truly did look bad. You know, there, there, there are these little things like the paint. I don't think was as thick as it should have been. Um, I feel like, it was, but maybe also it was kind of, um, maybe it was also kind of too, like a little bit too bad in a way. You know, like or like you know, I don't know. It felt it felt weird. Like it didn't feel correct. But Rosie Dawson, oh my God, she did a phenomenal job as Ahsoka. And honestly, this episode, and um, of course. I'm not going to go over the plot of the episode because why would I do that if you've seen this or you haven't? But either way, I'm talking about the things that people want to hear about, you know, like Ahsoka. So she was fighting some girl who did some bad stuff and a city, right? And, you know, she's doing her lightsaber stuff. And then she talks about Thrawn, which means this is actually picking up where Rebels left off because, of course, we know in Rebels, Sabine and... Um, and Ahsoka went off to look for Ezra and Thrawn, who had disappeared at the end of Rebel. And she actually asked, where is Thrawn? Where is your master? Implying Thrawn is still around, uh, which is insane because, of course, we know that Thrawn is a pivotal part of this. And that also means that it's very possible Sabine could show up at some point. And we know that there's been whispers around this concept. And, I mean, you know. And then at the end, the other thing we got, we learned is Grogo, a.k.a. the child, has been around since the... Uh, the Clone Wars, and that apparently this dude's been training in secret and that he had to hide his powers, so he's actually been around for a minute, you know? He's been around quite a bit, and Yoda knew of his existence, and she did mention, you know, Yoda's the only one I've seen like that. I feel like this kind of dispro disproves this idea that Yaddle is the same species as Yoda, uh, because she didn't mention Yaddle. I don't, I don't know. Um, but my god, that was amazing. I mean, the man, like, let's look. Let's face it. The best part of the season isn't the Mandalorian. It's baby, or sorry, Grogo. We gotta start calling him Grogo, and everything else. Like you know, I, I don't. I, I'm. I. Although, let me tell you something now. I can guarantee you that if anyone calls Grogo the child or Baby Yoda, I will die. And if I call him that, I will probably get angry at myself. So um, we're going to start officially calling him Grogo because that's his name and no one's going to do it. Every normal person who's never watched a show or heard of anything Star Wars is going to call Grogo Baby Yoda and it's going to drive me nuts because now we know it's done nothing. Now, I'm also happy that I didn't uh, upload the video I had about the cloning theory because that kind of looks stupid now because, um, you know, it's not true apparently. But now I don't understand this, right? Because they're being very vague about this idea of the origin of the species. And they still won't tell us what the species is. And so, I mean, technically my cloning theory is still there. 
Um, but, you know, I don't know. It's kind of messing with me now because, but, you know, they did, they did say they're going to find a Jedi, old Jedi temple, and then they're going to touch a thing, and then a Jedi could come looking for Grogo if, you know, he chooses to train. And I think this would be interesting because, of course, um, you had this theory or rumor that Cal from the Fallen Jedi, Fallen Order, the video game, is going to be, could be in this show. And, you know, if he came to look, because there's only a handful of Jedi still remaining, as Ahsoka pointed out at the end, and that we know, obviously. Um, we know that Ahsoka, Ezra, who's somewhere with Thrawn, uh, and Cal, and then Luke, right? Those, I think those are really the only Jedi who really exist right now. Um, and I'm sure there's some I'm missing, and if you know any of them I'm missing, just let me know in the comments. But, like, you know... I think that this kind of concept is it just you know this show is getting more and more kind of into this like they're they're doing the perfect thing they're not over throwing it with you know this idea this this fanfare kind of thing like you know these these fan kind of characters who a lot of people a lot of just casual Star Wars fans don't know who Ahsoka is because they didn't watch the Clone Wars or Rebels right so I think they're but they're balancing it out nicely and they're explaining it well enough right you know like a lot of casual Star Wars fans they see lightsabers like okay Jedi you know they don't even know the fact that Ahsoka was uh, Anakin's Padawan who then you know is probably the is the greatest Jedi of all time and I've decided officially that um you can't say anything against that because it's factually inaccurate Ahsoka's been around since the beginning. She, she, like, it, you know, in basketball, they have the GOAT conversation between LeBron and MJ. See, Ahsoka is the LeBron of the GOAT conversation. Now, this is not me talking about the basketball GOAT conversation because I will not touch that, but I will touch the Star Wars GOAT conversation where I say Ahsoka's the GOAT. Um, but let me, I mean, this was my favorite episode. I'm so excited to kind of see what they do with this. And I really do hope this pushes to an Ahsoka spinoff where we could see this resolution to the Thrawn arc because I really do want to see that. But let me know what you think down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. I mean, if you don't like it, then I guess dislike. Um, and share your thoughts down below and see you all next time. Bye.